Hi and welcome back to the business of marketing. Today is a big day for me because I woke up this morning and realized that the channel has crossed 100 subscribers. I also posted about it on social media and as I see right now, the channel stands at 142 subscribers. So it's a big day for me and I wanted to really thank everyone who supported me in this journey. Today I will be talking about promotion or merchandising. It is not just one of the pieces of marketing but also a very very important one. Whether it's a small brand or a large one, at some point or the other most brands are running some kind of a promotion. If you want to get a sense of how important promotion is, just close your eyes for a moment and think about the last time you bought something on promotion or the last time when you waited for some product or some brand that you really like to go on promotion so that you can buy it. That's when you realize how important promotion is in our day-to-day -day lives. In today's video, I will be talking about a few important types of promotions or merchandising activity which are carried out by brands. Uh, this is by no means an exhaustive list. This list is more from the perspective of data collection. When retail measurement companies like Nielsen or IRI are collecting and reporting data to the marketing teams, these are the kind of promotions which are covered and these are the criteria which are looked into. So I will be touching upon those in today's video. So let's get started with today's content. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real-world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. Before I proceed, a quick reminder that if you are new to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button now and if you have any thoughts or comments on what else you would want me to cover and how else you would want me to talk, uh, do leave them in the comment section below. There are broadly two ways in which promotional or merchandising data is collected. The first way of collection or the process of collection is the point of sale scanning method. What happens over here is that when the product is at the checkout counter and is being purchased, the barcode is scanned and that's how the transaction gets recorded. The second way of collecting data is the causal way where a physical audit is carried out. What happens in this process is a team of data collection people, they visit the retail outlets and they physically check the details within these outlets. They take pictures of the different kinds of promotions and merchandising activity which is going on and then they report back. This data is then added to the point of sale data which was earlier scanned and together it provides a holistic picture. I'll be covering four different kinds of promotional activity. The first one is known as TPR or Temporary Price Reductions. Temporary price reduction is nothing but discount which brings down the base price. However, there are a couple of things to note over here. The first thing to keep in mind is that the TPR data is recorded automatically. When the product gets scanned at the checkout counter and the system detects that there is a discount which has been applied. The second thing to keep in mind is for the TPR data to be recorded as a promotion or merchandising activity, the selling price must be lower than the base price by a certain percentage. How much should that percentage be? That depends on the country in which you are operating. For example, in the United States, the discount percentage needs to be at least 5% or more for it to be recorded as a temporary price reduction. The last thing to keep in mind is that the price reduction should be temporary. If the lower price continues for a very long period of time, it then becomes the new base price. This period of how long must it wait before the discounted price becomes the new base price is uh, something which varies by country and uh, depending on which country there are different uh, rules which apply. For some countries it could be 6 to 7 weeks, for other countries it could be a little longer. The second common type of promotion is known as promoted barcodes. What happens in this case is the promotional activity is not recorded on the basis of the discount which is provided, but it is recorded on the basis of the barcode which has been printed. So therefore, the barcode is printed specially and the moment that barcode is scanned, the system is able to recognize that uh, the promotion was applied. However, this is something which is not extremely common and is not usually available with a lot of data providers in all the different countries. The third most common kind of promotion is known as features. 
Features are actually retailer specific communication. Imagine this to be in the form of emailers or booklets or pamphlets or even posters which the retailer creates and puts up in the store or they might be sending it to their customers. The intent being to drive the sales of certain products. The data collectors who are visiting uh, different stores, they collect this information if it is in the form of a poster or something in the store or uh, on the basis of the emailers that they might have received. The last form of promotion which is extremely visible and we might all have seen it is known as displays. Displays are usually temporary selling locations where the products are displayed. The intent of the retailer when they are putting up displays is to kind of highlight and bring attention to certain products by putting them in locations within their stores where there is a higher probability of them to be sold. Usually such locations could be the ones which are near the checkout counter or right in the front of the store or sometimes at the end of the aisle. In some cases you might even notice like you know there are temporary installations which are created to display a certain product or a, or a range of products from a certain brand. So the next thing you might be wondering is that how is so much of data actually reported and uh, I don't know if uh, many of you have uh, actually seen the kind of data that is provided but if you see it, it feels extremely confusing uh, especially if you are new to it and uh, let me try and simplify this for you as much as I can. There are broadly two things that you need to keep in mind when you are looking at this data. The first thing to keep in mind is that what is the merchandising or promotional condition? Data is actually reported for each possible merchandising situation which exists. These conditions could be scenarios where no promotion is active or one out of the four different types of promotions is active or a two or three or a bundle of these promotions are active at the same time. Often time the different kinds of promotions run in parallel and therefore data is available for all such uh, possible breakdowns. So when you are looking at the data, try and understand what is the merchandising condition that it is referring to. The second thing to keep in mind is, especially when you are looking at uh, retail measurement data, is that a lot of different measures are reported. So for most of the measures that you want the information for, Data is not only reported on an overall basis but it is also reported for the different merchandising or promotional conditions which exist. So therefore if you want to know about a specific kind of sales or price or velocity data, that data is not just available on an overall basis but is also available for each of the different merchandising conditions that we spoke about. Now when you keep these two things in mind that what is the merchandising condition and what is the measure for those different merchandising conditions, then you will be able to make much better sense of the data which is available. So those were the four broad types of promotions or merchandising activity which are carried out. Obviously, it is not an exhaustive list. There can be a lot more other types of promotions uh, that are actually run in real life as well. But these are the most common ones and these are the ones where data is actually reported. In fact, uh, I hope that after seeing this video, uh, the next time you visit a store uh, and you come across a certain kind of promotion, probably you'll pause for a second and think about what's the kind of promotion it is and if you can slot it into the four different kinds of criteria that I was talking about. And maybe you might even encounter that there are a couple of promotion types which are running in parallel. For example, there might be a display but there is also a discount which is prov provided in that display. So that brings me to the end of today's video. I really hope you liked uh, what I had to share. And if you did, please hit the like button, share any comments that you might have. And uh, once again, thank you so much for all the support uh, in helping my channel reach 100 subscribe, actually 142 subscribers now. And much love and really appreciate and keep up, uh, you know, all the good wishes that have been pouring in from all directions until now. So thanks a lot and have a good time and see you next time on Business of Marketing.